Good morning and welcome to worship on this Bethany Village Sunday. We give thanks for Pastor Phil Hett that is here with us to preach and for Chris Erickson, CEO of Bethany Village, to read our lessons for us today. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. My name is Chris Erickson. I'm the CEO of Bethany Home Association. We're still thriving as an organization and we're expanding our offerings from total independence to complete care. We've been thinking about what makes us special as an organization. And today I'm excited to share a few things with you. Revolving the name Bethany Home Association will now be known as Bethany Village across our three organizations. The cottages will be our independent living. The assisted living site will now be known as Sunflower Terrace an offering full service senior living and Bethany Home will continue to provide the quality long-term care you've come to rely on. We're also embracing a new theme, the art of living. It captures our Lutheran heritage and the arts and culture that surround us here in Lindsburg. We're seeking to serve our community through a vibrant lifestyle that includes arts, culture, and meaningful activities. Let me play a video to give you a taste. What is the art of living? Here at Bethany Village, it's a life rich in friends, creativity, culture, and community, where we're empowered to do what we do best, laughing with our neighbors, gardening, quilting, tinkering, and puttering on our own time, tapping into the rich arts and culture in Lindsburg, sharing a meal with friends, old and new, a little help when we're not quite so able, and having a place that feels like home. This is life with purpose. Life focused on opportunity. This is the art of living. We already tap into the arts and creativity in many ways, and we hope to build on these things in the future. You'll also be seeing progress in the new Sunflower Terrace for seniors who want independence with just a little assistance. We're more than doubling in size, adding one and two bedroom apartments. The new addition at Sunflower Terrace will be open in the spring of 2021. It, it's just been wonderful. I can't say enough good things about where I live. It just felt like home, you know, and, uh, and the Lord has made me see that it is home. I'm very excited about the future of Bethany Village. I hope you are too. Welcome to The Art of Living. We begin by singing together the hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Let us sing.
The word is near you. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes from the word of God. God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading today is from Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that, it, that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We we'll are reading from Psalm 19, and we read responsibly. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all the lands, and their message to the ends of the world where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect, 
and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. But them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own, own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me, and then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, 1st chapter, verses 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through foolishness of our world. God decided through the foolish, foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim, proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We'll be reading John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. It's Bethany Home Sunday, and I have been asked to share with you today. I have the joy of spending my week at Bethany Home with many special people. They have so many beautiful life stories to share. They look forward to seeing all of you again. You are such a blessing to them as they are to you. God has so blessed us with each other as his children to share his love. Here are some greetings from some of our friends at Bethany Home. Hi, kids. Hi, kids. How you doing? Kids. Hi, kids. Oh, there's Meridine. Hello, Meridine. Oh, hello. Now the kids are wondering how you're doing. How long have you been sitting there? Oh, a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I just decided to come in. And I haven't played on that piano for quite a while. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you want to say anything to the children at church? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a great joy to be here with you today on this Bethany Village Sunday. You might know it more as Bethany Home, as you have probably heard by now we have had a name change on top of everything else going on this past year. But I assure you, it is the same wonderful, amazing place that it was before. So welcome once again on this Bethany Village Sunday. My name is Pastor Philip Hett, and I am the chaplain here at Bethany Village. So we know that the church it knows no boundaries. God's love, it extends beyond any political or geographical borders. When we think of the ministries of the church, we think of supporting organizations that stretch beyond our comforts, beyond what we see and know in our everyday lives. And that is good. The work of the Synod and the work of the ELCA is far-reaching, and it is generous and worthy of your support. We also think of the ministries in our own backyard, ministries like Bethany Village, Bethany Home, our long-term care facility, Sunflower Terrace, our assisted living, and the cottages, the independent living. We are a very unique and a very beautiful ministry of the church. We are unique and we are beautiful in that we are a non-profit nursing home. Yes, we need money to operate, but we do not answer to shareholders or executives. Our goal is to break even so we can provide care. And I often ask when I get a chance to speak to people, which of course has not been a lot this last year. But how many of you have a loved one who lives at Bethany Village or has lived there in the past? And how many of you have ever worked there yourselves? The longer I do this ministry, the more I realize that this includes most of the town of Lindsburg on that list. But Bethany Village, we are also unique in that we have a full-time chaplain. It really is a rarity among nursing homes. And I am so very blessed to follow in the footsteps of Bill Bushbaum 
and Don Hawk before him. But my immediate predecessor was Bill, and I learned so much from him. He was a friend and a mentor. And I give thanks for his life and his ministry. And I think of this unique ministry and the people that we serve. And I will not dwell on it, but we all know how hard this pandemic has been on everyone. I know that it has affected each of us differently. And we all have trauma of sorts. This is so very true for us at Bethany Village. This past year of isolation, of quarantine, of illness, and of losing some of our Bethany Village family to this virus. It has brought out the darkest of days. But it has also brought out the deepest of hopes. Hope in the ever-present love of Christ Jesus our Lord. Hope that I see in our residents every day. Hope that inspires and that proclaims and that lives. The eternal hope in Christ Jesus is a promise that we do profess. This is a hope that we state, that we believe through word and through deed. As it says in Romans chapter 8, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now I will add that I am convinced that no plague, no virus, no isolation, no social distancing, no loss of job or relationships or loved ones. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. As a chaplain there at Bethany Village, I am blessed. And I am uniquely called to proclaim this message. This message of God's love to the most vulnerable and the most isolated. The loneliest right here in our community. Personally, I give thanks so much to all of you for your love and support over the years. You were there when I needed it the most. And I thank you for supporting me still and supporting this ministry so much. And I am blessed to carry on that support in what I do and what I say. One of the unique things about this ministry is that I get a chance to be the pastor to the people of our Bethany Village family who have, dis have a disconnect with their own church family. We get people that move to our community from out of town for a number of reasons and they have to leave their church family behind. Yet they can find a home with us. And we also get residents who might be local but are also removed from their church home for a number of reasons. And they too find a home, a community, and a worshiping body there at Bethany Village. Now I love supporting the local pastors and helping to foster those relationships. And I also love being the pastor to those who need one. It really is a beautiful ministry. So I'm gonna close with a story. A story about a friend of mine from the nursing home. Shortly after I was ordained in 2019, she asked me to baptize her. And this remains one of the highlights of my ministry. 
And when she passed away last month, I was with her. And I was blessed to be a part of her funeral. It was a cold and it was a cold February morning, but it was beautiful in its own way. So after the service, I wrote my reflections. So may these words give you an insight into the life and to the ministry that we do at Bethany Village. Thank you for your love and thank you for your support. This is what I wrote on that cold February day. The calendar was set to mid-February and the temperature outside said eight degrees. We gathered together, huddled under a tent with the logo of the funeral home etched on its side. The green canopy protected us from the biting wind as it beckoned the grieving hearts. We were together to pay our respects, to say our goodbyes, and to mourn our dear friend. The snow on the ground betrayed our tracks going to and from the gravesite and the vehicles, many of which were left running. With my face covered and my eyes blurry from the biting cold, I surveyed the familiar scene. Family members standing together with hushed words of greeting and sorrow. Quiet eyes looking forward to where I stood with my back to the casket. The final resting place waiting like a conscientious keeper of time. As we too stood waiting, huddled in our sorrow. All with the backdrop of snow gently falling over the cedars in a blanket of white. A beautiful farewell. A beautiful farewell for a beautiful soul. Another send off, another goodbye. Another dear friend in my care committed to the Lord. It is true what I said in my remarks to the family. It is true that it was great, it was a great joy to have her in my life. As it says in the funeral liturgy, to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. For indeed, the longer I do this job of nursing home chaplain and the more people I say goodbye to, the more I know and believe that life is a pilgrimage. We are on a journey, an epic adventure. Every life is precious and everyone circling around this globe is on this journey together. Like every good epic story, like every good pilgrimage, the story is not the destination. It is the journey along the way. I believe that we are created in life to love one another and to guide one another and to be in communion with those around us. I give thanks for my dear friend who was my companion in this pilgrimage on earth. I give thanks for her life, her love, her friendship. But now it is time to say goodbye. Goodbye for now. It is time to lay her in the earth and to commit her body to the ground. We know that her journey on this earth is ended. Yet through faith, we know that her life is never ending and we will be united again in glory. With the snow falling around, blanketing the world in beauty, we rejoice at the beautiful soul we gather to lay to rest. We rejoice even more in the beautiful promise that her pilgrimage has come to an end and her destination 
is assured. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her, and the Lord's face shine upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Amen. And may the same Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 723, Canticle of the Turning. Let us sing together.
In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything has passed away. Behold, everything new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We now have a moment of offering reflection and prayer. We give thanks for your continued support and prayer for the mission and ministry of this congregation. Here are some ways to give.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts we offer ourselves to you, and with the Church through all the ages we give thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at all works and to join you in tending the creation of well-being. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In Jesus you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in God, body, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially Jim, Lou, Gladys, Jane, Joanne, Keo, Lois, Clarice, Clifford, Meridine, Jolene, Genevieve, Fred and Ellie, Walter and Dolores, Alan and Sue, Tony and Lloyd, Reverend Elwin, Maya, Mary, Lois, Erveline, Heath, Betty, Ellie, Mary, Ann, Isaiah, Marvin, Mark, and Roseanne. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints who have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We entrust ourselves and our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words of our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing number 660, Lift High the Cross. Let us sing together.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you. 